What's going on, everyone? Happy Friday. Welcome to today's edition of the Honky Tonk Highway. My name is Kelly Cavallero. I'm one half of Seven Era Media. Made it to the end of the week, guys. It's Friday. Who's ready for the weekend? I know I am. Episode number 70 today, and you are in for a treat, let me tell you. A couple of quick things first, guys. Don't forget, if you haven't yet, like, follow, share, subscribe, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. That way you don't ever miss when we go live, anytime we post a video, anytime we do anything. All right? Also, every Tuesday, don't forget, Honky Tonk Highway hits the radio waves. That's right. We are on Line Dancing Radio every Tuesday, 9 to 11 Eastern, 2 to 4 UK time. Pretty much doing the same thing I do in the afternoon. You just don't get to see my smiling face. And I get to play a lot of music. That's the only difference. So make sure you tune in on that. Today's guest, guys. If you know the dance raised on Biscuits by Roy Verdonk and Sebastian Hotland, you're going to know who this next guy is. He's opened up for the likes of Janet Kramer and many other country artists. Ladies and gentlemen, from Nashville, Tennessee, by way of Illinois, Mr. Eric Burgett. What's going on, Eric? What's up, man? How you doing? I'm Kelly. doing great. Thank you for joining me today. It's a definite honor. Thanks for having me, man. I'm looking forward to this. Absolutely. Um, so... For those who don't know or never heard of you, I know I, I definitely did my research, don't worry, to make sure I didn't miss anything. Um, how did you get into country music? Man, I had a long journey. I So I started started getting into it by way of the piano. Um, I was four years old. I actually grew up on a farm in, in central Illinois, and my family farms corn and soybeans. Rode on the tractor with my dad growing up, listening to old, old country music, you know, um, gotten into eventually Phil Vassar, who, who's a piano player, mm -hmm. um, Ronnie Millsap, piano player. Yeah. Like, and I even had some Billy Joel thrown into that mix um, and just really took a liking to the piano. Uh, tried playing guitar a couple of times, but piano always kind of pulled me back, man. And so took piano lessons and, uh, you know, had a long-winded journey to the point where I studied piano in college at the same time, still having my country cover band on the weekends. And um, now I've, I've, I made the big move to Nashville in 2012, man. So. Awesome. Awesome. Um, guys, definitely check out his YouTube channel. You're going to see some nice old videos of Eric playing the uh, piano. Um, I have to ask, I, I watched, I did watch a lot of your videos over the last couple of days since I got the phone call. Um, whether I'd be interested in having you on the show. So I looked at a lot of your cover songs. What is your favorite non-country song to cover? <laughs> hey, uh, my favorite non-country song. Okay, so I go. Y'all like? Are you are you, uh, do you are you familiar with Third Eye Blind? Yeah, dude. I throw that into the mix of uh, like some Florida Georgia Line songs. So we'll do like at a live show, we'll play um, <clears throat> Shine On or like Cruise or something. And then we'll, we'll mash up um, uh, um, Jumper. Okay. There you go. <laughs> so we have a blast with that. Probably another one. I don't know. It's tradition. Like initially it wasn't country. It was it was by a Mark Cone, but it was called Walking in Memphis. Yeah. Lone Star eventually covered it. So. Um, yeah, probably one of my other favorites. <laughs> yeah, I, I watched a couple of. I loved uh, you did uh, you did this with another girl. I apologize by One Republic. I mean, yeah, yes. that was a really cool, cool dude. We did a uh, <clears throat> oh, Piano Man by Billy Joel. That's always a oh. uh, crowd singing along, man. So I'll I'll countrify it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, the chorus. That's that's yeah, definitely. So uh, I brought up the fact that uh, last year, about a year ago. Uh, Roy Verdonk and uh, Sebastian Hotland did a dance to your song Raised. They called the dance Raised on Biscuits. And uh, what was it like seeing a line dance done to one of your songs? Dude, it was awesome. I, I like, I'm not going to lie. I've always wanted to have a country dance to one of my songs. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up doing, like, like in high school, I grew up um, – doing some plays in high school and stuff. And I learned very minimal dancing and stuff like that. But um, I was Scarecrow in The Wizard of Oz, so I learned some, I've learned some there dance you go. skills. <laughs> and then, uh, so, you know, but I just, I loved it, man. I, and it's funny how I came across it. I was 
um, on YouTube because YouTube will like read your what do they call it the algorithm or whatever. Yep. And your search history and what you've looked at. Yep. And, and stuff. And my song, I saw it pop up on um, on the side of my screen. It said "Raised on Biscuits," and it said my name. And it said "Raised on Biscuits Dance," and I'm and then my name, and I'm like, "What the heck is this?" So I look it up, and I, I have people in the Netherlands dancing to my song, and then uh, that's how I kind of met Ray Verdonk. I, I emailed him, reached out, and said, "Dude, I just want to say thank you for." Um, spreading my music over there first of all because that's really cool for an independent like myself and um, I showed it to my family I shared it on Facebook people are awesome They're, they love it they said it's awesome <laughs> so. yeah um, so uh, Roy reached out asked me if I'd be interested in having Eric on the show and uh, you just released a new single a week ago and that's why he called me he, uh, he uh, wanted to He's doing a little challenge to your new song, and uh, it was it's been a, what about a week since you released the song? Uh, sometimes late at night. Yep. And uh, next week on uh, Roy's channel on V10, uh, we uh, he is having Rob debut a live dance. He's going to choreograph to it, um, which it's it's a song I feel after listening to it, and when he when he sent it to me, definitely right up Rob's alley. Rob's an amazing choreographer and uh it should be interesting um he's going to be doing it live and uh i just watched your video why don't you tell people uh, where how uh, the new single came about yeah man so um it's been two years since i got married i got married in 2018 uh my wife amy i surprised her with the song we wrote it uh, I wrote it with my producer, Matt McClure, great guy, good friend of mine. I uh, met him when I first moved to town back in 2012, and um, we're good buddies. And we wrote it with our buddy, Tony Wood, um, who writes for um, Curb Publishing here in Nashville. And um, I, I hit him with, with this idea like that I wanted to surprise my wife with a first dance song. And they were like, heck yeah. And this song, we actually already kind of had in the works, like writing it and stuff. And the fact that I said, hey, I want to surprise my wife with this song, kind of changed a few of the words, a few of the ideas within the song. And um, it turned out to be what it is, man. And I'm, I'm so pumped to finally have this song out because, you know, as a songwriter in Nashville, I'm writing songs every day, or at least coming up with a song idea for the next song right. that I write. You know, we write songs every week and this song has been like it's been really exciting and a lot of people have heard it who, who were at my wife's and my wedding but now everyone can hear it so it's like everyone's part of the story now man it's really cool uh, yeah guys definitely check out uh itunes apple music spotify google amazon youtube and it's all it's on all of them it's called sometimes late at night um actually i think i have i do toss the image up real quick guys there's the name of it um, definitely go check that out. Um, it was released a week ago, so uh, for all you uh, choreographers that are out there watching it, um, don't bother trying to use the song Rob Fowler is going to be doing to it, to it. That way we don't have 90 dances to it <laughs> by next week. It's always sometimes hardest when music's released because everybody – it's always on a Tuesday. Everybody is always waits for Tuesday on Apple for the new hot tracks to be released. And usually by Wednesday, you'll see if it's a, if it's a good dance song or got a good beat to it, you'll see by Wednesday, 500 new dances written. <laughs> so it's it's definitely a treat. Um, your your manager sent me over a list, and you've opened up for some pretty awesome names. Um, let's see: Chris Stapleton, Lee Bryce, Charlie Warsham, Phil Vassar, Frankie Ballard, Janet Kramer, Roddy Atkins, Craig Morgan, Jim Brickman, which I saw the video. Uh, Jim Brickman up on YouTube. That was awesome. Who's on that bucket list that you'd want to open for that you haven't got to that you'd want to be that you'd want to open a concert for that would just be totally that dream. I don't even need to think twice, but Billy Joel, Billy Joel would be awesome, nice. dude. Even like. Just maybe collaborate on a piano song with him and do like dueling pianos or something, or like oh. he takes a couple, a couple notes, he takes a couple notes. Uh, man, I just I love his story. I love where he came from. Love his writing ability, and um, 
he's a triple threat, man, singer, oh, songwriter. Yeah. So. Yeah, definitely. That 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 would that would that would be epic if, if something like that. Yeah. Dude, yeah, man. You know, uh, as a what is it moving out? I think it's I think it's moving out the uh, stage version based yes. on his song. Really cool. He's just doing some cool things through his throughout his life, man. So, um, who would be who would be your bucket list of who you want to who do you want to write a song with? Um, Phil Basser probably. Um, I've mentioned him a couple times already. I I love his song uh, "Next Thirty Years." I mean, Tim, Tim McGraw cut that one. Um, man, there's so many, so many good songs he's written. He's a, he's a wordsmith, and yeah, really well, man. I would say I'd love to write write with him. Yeah, I definitely. I, I love the fact, and I, I said this. I said this to my girlfriend. Um, when he sent me this song, I, I obviously started looking up. I wanted I wanted to watch some videos on it and the the keyboard setup you have with the casing around it. It just it's just so different and so it brings that different different element. You're all so used to country music artists playing the guitar or standing there with a the mic, and the keyboard just you up moving around playing with it means just that, that whole different element. The the videos and I believe was it Ray's that you and your wife shot and edited. The entire yeah. Video for? yeah, dude, we uh we shot that at my on, on my family's farm uh, over Christmas. Actually, there were like literally days um, during Christmas. We still call it Christmas vacation, you know. It's like uh, it's the farm, hang out. Uh, there were like three days during that couple weeks where it was like beautiful weather. It literally looked like springtime. Oh, so no, no, shot that whole video in the in the biting cold of winter and, and <laughs> in the middle um we edited it in a way like so she got all the iphone shots and then we kind of threw it together edited it in a way that we could make it look like springtime and stuff and, uh, she's beautiful she helps me with everything and she's super supportive um, and the piano shell i built man i built that a couple years ago put some corrugated metal around it because i grew up on a farm so i wanted yeah. to look kind of and then and yeah uh, Freaks a little bit at every show, and that's something special. <laughs> yeah, look, I, I saw it for the first time, and I'm like, and I, I, I paused it and looked back because I, I love crazy stuff like that, when you can take and put, make something look different. And I was just like, okay, that's creative. That's definitely, because it, it makes people want to look at it. It draws that attention shot. It definitely is that different that different element. I hate I hate going to concerts where the singer just stands there. Just stands there and just sits behind a microphone. I understand they're a good, good singer and stuff like that, but it's like, guys, be a little bit more lively. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Which you got that covered. I, I I made sure to go back. I watched a ton of ton of videos over the last week. Um, oh, I knew a couple because um, I, I remember seeing the Rays video when uh, when Roy did the dance. Um, but yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know until your manager sent me over the info that you actually did it. That you actually shot that. I was like, "Wow, that came out amazing." Thanks, man. We're we're on a budget, and um, as you know, probably doing things on a budget. Yep. You know, <laughs> there, there's gonna be times where I can't do that anymore. It's getting to that point where we're we're busy doing a lot of different things where I do not have time to do that. But thank God it was over Christmas and <laughs> off, and boom. But. Actually, we did do we did do a music video for sometimes late at night during this time because, <laughs> well, <laughs> you you kind of really weren't given a choice. <laughs> so, but my management team helped me record it, and uh, uh, it was it was uh, it's going to turn out awesome. That's actually going to be released on Monday, y'all. So you all check that out, and then I can't wait to see the line dance to the song and follow yeah. that up with the video. That's gonna be awesome. Yep. That that that's definitely going to be uh, fun to watch. Rob do that. Um, Chris asks. She goes. Can you tell what's on the top of your piano currently that you have behind you? It looks like like a piece of a windmill, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm always I'm always buying the next thing I see that like reminds me. So like this, I saw that. I don't know where I saw this at. It was at some store around like harvest time mm -hmm. and oh it's harvest, harvest time they got, they got halloween, halloween stuff out they got windmills they got right like, 
uh, fake ears of corn that you can hang out whatever. Um, although I'm, I'm a fan of the real corn and stuff, but um, yeah, this, it's a it's a half of a windmill. So I sit it on top of my piano. I painted my piano green. I don't know if y'all can see kind of like so. <laughs> so I have to ask because he sent me over. Um, you have a chicken rub available now. I'm guessing. Yeah, I mean, so, but then, and I, I, I found them funny. I, I, I looked at a couple of them because it sounds like it's, it's almost like something I would do. You have your cooking videos. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, uh, you probably, you, you probably caught the bush light in there. I, I grew up. I, I did. Don't say I, I shouldn't say I grew up drinking bush light. <laughs> say that. It wasn't until like, you know, later in my life I started drinking bush light because that's just like what my family drank. Right. My old brother and, uh, you know, we'd buy cases of bush light at like the Casey's gas station in mm -hmm. central Illinois. <laughs> it was such a small town thing. And so now here in Nashville, I'm probably the only person that drinks bush light in Nashville. I'm just kidding. But there are very limited bars here. So anyway, I love beer recipes, right? So everything I do is like based on cooking with bush light and corn nuggets. I, Beer candy bacon, or like I don't know what else did I do? Uh, you did a, you, you did a some, the deep fried fair fair one. Oh, I did the funnel cake. The, the funnel, funnel cake, cake. yes. <laughs> yes, I was like I'm, I'm going through videos of music videos and music videos, music videos, and all of a sudden, cooking, cooking, cooking. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> I popped, started popping Dude. open a couple. I'm like, okay, now this is just this is all. It was it was awesome. They were fun to watch. It just, Thanks, I didn't dude. see him coming all of a sudden because it goes music, 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 music for forever, cooking video. <laughs> uh, and thanks, dude. I, I love – my wife and I both love cooking and um, we're grilling out a lot. I think she's making pasta tonight. I'm excited. Like her homemade pasta, I can take a break off like thinking about what I'm cooking next and just hang out. <laughs> but uh, elding the two together, dude, music and, and food and – family and just having fun man so i appreciate you watching them and, and having fun watching oh dude them. I, 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 kelly <laughs> hates it my girlfriend hates it because i'll sit here and watch youtube to get ideas of different things <laughs> like different video dude. snippets and i'm all that's how i find my music because i choreograph as well that's how i find my music i'll search through youtube because i don't want to find the newest stuff on the radio all the time i'll search through youtube and find like old covers or old songs yeah. that released that no one knew about that just did lyric videos. You never saw it hit the radio, but there was a lyric video that got 40 million views. Yeah, so man, crazy. I'll start. I'll just search randomly, and she's like, "Where do you, where do you even find this stuff? YouTube. You find it on YouTube. You can find anything on YouTube. You Absolutely. pretty much can." <laughs> it had a long journey to where where it is now, and I. It's like, it's crazy, man. The amount of stuff that's still on YouTube from like I don't know how many years ago. People, right? It's relevant. It's awesome. It's it's awesome because it just doesn't go anywhere. It's it's great because you can always find stuff. So um, I just got asked this, and I know uh, I think you're going to. Um, would you mind playing the new song? Dude, absolutely, man. I'll do it. All right, I'm gonna, take, I'm gonna take myself off screen, ladies and gentlemen. Here it is. Sometimes late at night. I 
watch a little smile and moonlight cross your face. And when I hear you breathe, it's a new world. Say it's a long way. I got a heart for the dreams and dreams. Say I wouldn't say a thing too much. I don't believe I can take it in. absolutely awesome thank you thank you thank you well there you go guys um that is what rob fowler is going to be choreographing to this wednesday on v10 2 p.m eastern 8 p.m uh paris time so uh make sure if you haven't yet head over get hooked up on that channel uh you're definitely going to not want to miss that um that's going to be awesome i'm looking forward to what he comes up with because uh i was upset when royce when Roy sent it to me, I'm like, sweet, baby, he wants to collaborate on it. He goes, I gave it to Rob. No! Um, <laughs> I was like, dang okay. it, Roy. <laughs> he was like, yeah, he goes, I gave it to Fowler. I'm like, yeah, I should have known you are going to do that. <laughs> so, uh, it's hard. It, it's hard, because it has to be, and I'm kind of curious on how this works. I've asked a couple other guys that I've known in the music industry, how does it go, like, if you, you come up with this great idea for a song, you have a thing, and then all of a sudden, a week later, if someone else releases a song with almost the exact same, almost the exact same song you pretty much just dreamed up? <laughs> and I've never had that before. <laughs> That's but similar, similar, similar things have had, like, maybe, like, a, a song title. Right. It's very similar or something like that, but... um. I don't know, man. I, I, it's, I don't know. It, it's, I feel like it's all good. Like, talent in this town is crazy, and uh, I love collaborating with people. And um, I feel like it's all healthy and good, and like, I don't know. But uh, you know, I feel like where it came from is, is definitely right. The most art. Like sometimes late at night came a me like directly from the heart. That I wrote it with two of my good buddies. We all. Um, love our wives dearly and um, very similar perspectives we're writing together mm -hmm. it was like magic man so um, I don't know I've never had that before where some where you know I don't want to say someone stole my idea but it's, it feels like it though well, we have, I would <laughs> that's why you always see choreographers like like always like want the music all of a sudden you'll see people like no 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 I want to write to that song and you get multiple people at least some to the same song like right at right at the same time man well hey we're gonna have to like do some kind of collaboration me you and, and roy absolutely I'll, I'll i'm all game for that you guys like maybe we do like a little strip down acoustic version of the song and you guys can dance it i don't know we'll figure it out. <laughs> absolutely 
So um, I ask I ask my line dancers a question, my choreographers a question. I'm going to ask you a, a version of the question to see. Um, I always ask them if they could go back and rewrite one of the dances they've written, which one would it be? If you knew now what you knew, say, if you could go back and think, is there any songs you've written that after you released it and you now you've heard it and heard it and heard it, that you just say to yourself, I wish I'd done this a little bit differently in it? Um, <clears throat> if, if there is one, um, and I'm kind of speaking off the top of my head, I've never been asked that question. That's a really good question. Um, there are things I think about all the time where I'm like, hmm, that would be kind of cool to like throw like this word in instead of that word in. They're similar sounding. But I only say that because I think I'm smarter now. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like st stuff I wrote back in high school. Um, but they were the beginning of me and my music. So right. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if I would go back and change it, man, because it makes me who I am. And yeah. my roots so like spread out in that song um i look at it as um a trophy in a way to like look back at like i know i love where i'm at now so i know i've grown and um i don't know i don't think i i don't know man it's crazy <laughs> i know i always tend to ask the good questions <laughs> if i do change anything like at my live shows it's probably a little bit of the melody here and there because i feed off the excitement of the crowd oh, of course uh, like I go a little higher or something or higher than I normally would. I don't know. So I was going, we we're going through music on um, Apple music today. And uh, I'm curious now because Roy's Roy's going to reteach Ray's on biscuits on Wednesday, a couple hours before Rob does <laughs> awesome. new thing. I still go, I still go dancing in country bars a lot once they reopen again, but I still love it. I have five, there's two or three in the town I live in all over the state of Florida. Florida's huge. Huge on line dance and huge on country bars. The, the club remix of Rays would be awesome in a country bar. I'm just curious if the dance fits it. So now I told I'm gonna go and make sure, go and check that now because I'm like, ooh, firm, like, wider hit hit mounts or something or like a. <laughs> yeah, it's like she Kelly played it to me. She goes, "Too bad Roy wrote to this. Listen, listen to the remix." I'm like, the remix grabbed me right off. I'm like, whoa. I didn't see that coming at all. <laughs> we have big in that man. It's 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 pretty cool. Like we've always we've been trying to me and my uh, team. We've been you know we put out the main song mm -hmm. and then follow it up with like an acoustic version. So yep. we did like porch remix with some honky tonk piano a little bit, and then the remix came out. And I I don't I can't tell you how many people reached out who just like say they love that. Um, some like it more than the regular one, which is which is awesome for me. Like that's that's cool, man. So. Uh, See, which is backwards because normally I tend to I tend to like the acoustic versions usually more than the normal song. Just something different about an acoustic version that usually grabs me. It is it is more uh, intimate, no doubt, man. I, I I really dig that. I, I I'll be honest with you. I, I think I love um, I almost love playing acoustic shows sometimes more than full band um, yeah. because so you're just with the audience and. Um, Nothing gets me like the excitement of the audience at a full band show, though. And I have a I have an amazing group of guys that play behind me in my band, and um, so I better watch what I say. But <laughs> I do. Uh, someone uh, um someone just asked, do you remember the first <laughs> song you wrote? First song I ever wrote was a song called "Nothing Better." Um, I just had a huge flashback. Like, uh, that's a good question. Thank you for that. That's one of those songs that is near and dear to my roots and where I grew up and it is like I've thought a couple times that I might change a few a few things in that song but but then again you know I'm gonna catch myself and say no I wouldn't change anything because I, I go back home and uh, my hometown is in central Illinois middle of a bunch of cornfields and soybean fields and we're actually gonna be playing up there in a, in a I think in a week or two and everyone comes out and supports us and sometimes I won't have that song on a set list and someone requests it and that means the world to me. Um, so. Awesome. No, that's the song. The love now, song. Um, is this going to be your first show back live or have you got to perform live since this all happened? As close to my hometown, yes. It'll be the first <laughs> first show. Um, we, we did play up there like a couple hours from my hometown. Um, they're all 
like outdoor concerts, mm-hmm. which is cool. It gives people, you know, the ability to come out and like do something and not feel, you know, you know, uneasy about it. But um, I'm excited, man. It's gonna be. It's a place called Timbuktu Saloon, and they're gonna have us out in the back, like sandbar area, beach volleyball. <laughs> be cool. A lot of bush light flowing. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. Now, uh, anything. Uh, Anything that's been keeping you busy, non-music related, since the whole pandemic that you've got a chance to, yeah, you normally wouldn't have had time to do. Um, yeah, that's well, editing things like um, like photos and stuff that still deals with music. I'm gonna I'm gonna venture off. I uh, have been able to start sort of a backyard greenhouse thing, so I'm gonna okay. backtrack. My family. <laughs> Uh, so we farm corn and soybeans right. in Illinois. They also own a greenhouse business um, where they sell flowers and trees and shrubs and stuff. And um, my wife and I basically built ourselves a greenhouse and kind of got back to my roots a little bit. I've been teaching her a little bit how to grow like tomatoes or something. You know, our garden is bigger than ever this year, and I would say we definitely cut some costs on going to the grocery store buying jalapenos <laughs> that's good that's good time for that man i don't if i didn't have this time to like right. do that i wouldn't have built the greenhouse in the backyard and build a garden <laughs> so that's how that's how this that's that's how this whole talk show started i didn't have i was on the road 35 40 weekends a year with dance events and i've talked about doing something along these lines for a year year and a half and then this happened i'm like well, I got time now. So dude, it, I started a talk show. <laughs> yeah, that silver lining thing, dude. I feel like there's always something to look forward yep. to and just kind of get out of the weeds a little bit to see it. And so. So, if you weren't if you weren't doing country music, what would you be doing? Um, probably farming with my dad. Um and I, I, I love that I still get a glimpse of that <clears throat> going home during harvest time. I can drive the combine and get in the fields and stuff. So I'm blessed to still be able to go back and, and see that my two brothers are, you know, working away with my dad. And uh, I'm glad to be able to do that. But I almost would pr- I'd probably be farming um, if I wasn't doing music. I feel like I'm like a farmer of songs. So I still kind of like, you know, <clears throat> live um, you talked about how you, you went to school to play for the piano. Um, what was it like uh, to uh, accompany the Nashville Ballet? It was awesome, man. It was awesome. Um, I, I had figured that question might come up being <laughs> guy. And it's, it was really cool. It was one of the first jobs that I landed when I got to Nashville. So I'm going to backstory. Uh, I'm going to backtrack again and Go ahead. tell you. <laughs> um, in 2000 and. 11 I was in college I was getting ready to graduate that uh that next spring 2012 and I decided to take a little trip to Nashville and my parents came with me it was one of those things like we hit up all the bars I like meet people at a songwriting event this guy is sitting by the soundboard I go um hey how can I be on one of these songwriter nights and uh he gave me his info and um Next thing I know, I'm going to the School of National Ballet the next morning to check out another facet of something that I might want to do when I move here. And then another, th- I went to Belmont University to kind of see the campus. And mm-hmm. little did I know, um, also I visited a church that I almost that I that I eventually wound up in. And little did I know, all these little things that I I kind of laid the groundwork that weekend when I came to town with my parents and they all became a part of my job. So like National Ballet was one of those. And I <laughs> sat in on a dance class. I know I knew like nothing about ballet and I still don't know anything about ballet. <laughs> it's a song that you could dance to and it was, and I had the classical training, right? And I had, you know, I was doing like a, a like that could be, a, I would play it much slower than that for the dancers because it would. I, I recognize certain words that the instructor said would work with certain dances and stuff like that. 
and there's always a structure, right? I think there's start slow and the music speeds up. So I was grabbing little nuggets of wisdom here, and and so that was that was pretty cool, man. But what that job gave me was the ability to improvise on the spot because I was making up songs too. I was making up pieces that might fit this dance. The instructor dance the dance for the classes and then I was thinking in my head oh this might be kind of cool to go with that dance and it worked about 90% of the time sometimes they restart the dance and was like Birgit we have to restart that pick a different song <laughs> so it was, I was wearing my cowboy boots into this classical ballet class it was man it's, it's a hoop oh, I, bet that would, that, I bet you that was definitely a sight to, sight to get on camera <laughs> <laughs> um, oh man oh fun. yeah I saw that and I'm like oh I'm definitely asking that question I was definitely yeah definitely was asking that question <laughs> so now I'm branching out and now my songs fit country dancers so that's awesome <laughs> well, I found yeah. my found my way <laughs> if, if you, you found your uh, you found your niche <laughs> but I will say man that like it's everyone has their own journey in this town and I, I feel like I'm in a good place right now with the team I have and um, my couple my first couple years were spent like working an odd job here an odd job here maybe teaching piano um, randomly during the week and then I go out on tour on the weekends and stuff and now I, I'm pretty cool man where I'm at and I'm excited to put out more of my music and everything so Awesome, awesome. Um, any uh, any news on when you're going to be able to get back on the road more full time? Um, I I play it safe and I say uh, like February twenty twenty. I'll just say January, like in the new year. I hope, I hope, man. But till then, I'm you know I'm gonna take. Uh, I've been taking a lot of offers for shows like outside shows. Right. And stuff. I know it'll draw people and people won't, be, like I said, feel uneasy about coming out to a show or whatever. And I can keep my band safe and all that stuff. Right. Like be a lot of things you got to think about. And, um, but I love that this whole time period gave us the ability to recognize technology more. <laughs> yep. We're already doing it way before then, <laughs> so you're kind of already a step ahead. But I learned quickly, you know, how to do certain things like Facebook Live with logos and stuff like that. And, um, yeah. You know, just making it as professional as we can, given the circumstances. But I don't know. I hope. I hope at the. I hope March 2020 brings good vibes, uh, or 2021 brings good vibes. I don't know. My last show was in March 2020, so <laughs> at uh, Moonshine Beach. Have you heard of that place? I have. Uh, big, big line dance, big club out there. It was really cool. Um, that was that was my last full band show before the pandemic hit. So then I'm thinking ahead, like, okay, March 21, it's got to happen. It's got to happen. <laughs> Would be awesome if you go back to Moonshine Beach for it one year later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Be amazing. So, um, you got the video dropping for the new singles coming up. I saw that on YouTube today. That's coming up this week, right? Yeah, Monday morning. I think we're doing it's like a nine a.m. video release, and it features um, my wife and I, our wedding day, um, along with other various like real moments of our life. Like nothing's fake about it. Nothing was staged. Um, the only thing that was staged. Uh, I guess every, the, the stuff that wasn't pre-recorded <laughs> prior to the music video editing, it, I was at a baby grand piano and um, I sang through the song a couple times and, and all that stuff. So it was really cool. So it, it's all edited together and I'm excited for y'all to see it. <laughs> yep. So definitely check that out guys. I know you can uh, set a reminder on YouTube. So head over to his YouTube channel. Um, set a reminder for that. That's going down on Monday. Um, definitely get the new song. Definitely download a couple of the other ones. Uh, unless it has a good dance beat, don't save them for me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when's the new? Uh, you have the new single. Any new? Uh, any other new music in the works coming up? 
we have we have some other other releases coming up before the end of the year. Um, I won't share anything just yet, but no I'm really looking forward to you know the next couple months. I will say, like I'm sometimes late at night. We're gonna be going to radio with it. Mm-hmm. Start middle middle of September. So I, I hope we get it on some stations down there in Florida, man. Um, I'm really looking forward to just spreading it out further than where it's gone so far. And all, and obviously with the line dates, man, just so many thoughts in my head. I can't wait to see what comes of it. And um, new music is always being written. I'm going to hopefully be going back into the studio early next year to even – I've seen a couple of the pictures of your studio with you working. You don't have you you don't have that much of a slouch setup there, but <laughs> I've seen some of your stuff on your pictures on Instagram of your your editing setup. <laughs> That's my studio right there, so I'm gonna give him credit for that. <laughs> um, my producer Matt Mackler has a sweet setup. Um, yeah, he does. <laughs> he's been he's been in it for years and just so much knowledge, and he'll talk your ear off about here and i have no idea what he's talking about i just know that i love the piano that i play on and i just go in and sing my butt off <laughs> so, uh, it's, yeah, it's funny it's my, my my friend maddie b just joined up uh in the chat and she goes his new release is awesome i listen on amazon she goes kelly can you and i claim doing a dance to sometimes late at night maddie you missed it at the beginning of the show um, Roth Fowler has already uh, claimed he's going to be choreographing to it live on V10 on Roy Verdonk's channel next Wednesday at 2 o'clock Eastern, so 11 a.m. your time in Washington. I know. I didn't even get to lay claim on it. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to find another one. <laughs> there, will be others, man. there will be others. I uh, I can't wait. Oh, no, I, uh, the, I'm so looking forward to it. Rob is a Rob is an animal. Rob is an amazing choreographer. I I am so looking forward to what he's going to come up with to this. Um, it's going to be an awesome awesome time to watch his mind at work. Um, so it's definitely going to be something to look forward to. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, definitely. And uh, I'm looking forward to um, Raisin Biscuits being brought back up. Uh, Woo. That's going to be a fun one. I, I love the I love watching that music video again. The heart, I loved it. It was great. Thank you. So, but um, yeah, uh, Maddie, you'll have to go back and watch. You played it live. You missed it. You just tuned in. Tell your boss next time you don't have to keep working. (laughs) Yeah, come on. (laughs) It's so it's so funny because I have so many time zones in my chat. Either it's either ten forty five at night or. 2.45 2.45 in the afternoon still. <laughs> that's crazy. Like, that's crazy. I was talking to my manager earlier today, and um, I was just reaffirming that, like, what time I needed to be ready to do this. Because I saw all those times. Sorry. I saw, I saw all those times on there, man. Like, Paris, London. Yep. Like, man. So, I'm, I'm right here just close to you <laughs> you're in florida i'm in tennessee <laughs> right yeah no I, i've been doing a lot of broadcasting for my buddies for roy and them and uh it's so hard because i have to get up i'll get up at like five six o'clock in the morning for it to be 10 o'clock their time and I'm like by the time Dude. i wake up everyone's like well i message you in the morning i go no you message me in your morning which is in the middle of your night morning. for me <laughs> 3 a.m is not morning guys <laughs> Uh, you, you and I are in a similar thing because uh, you, you doing those kind of interviews and like talks and stuff and I'm doing like radio tours and mm-hmm. um, I need to be at radio station at 7 a.m. or sometimes 6 a.m. Right. This is zone and I was crossing to so many time zones last year when I was doing radio tour. Um, I can imagine. It was, nothing like being out on the road though, just like doing it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it's it's so it's so hilarious because I, I play a lot of video games online, but everybody I play with is over overseas. So it'll be ten thirty my time, and they'll still be up playing. It's four thirty in the morning for them. <laughs> and yeah, dude, keep it's, on it's, top. They're they're crazy. It's 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 awesome. So, but um, guys, if you haven't yet, go download, buy it, find it somewhere. It's on like ten different avenues. Head over to his website 
He has a list of all of them. I put down his handle. It's right underneath his name. At follow it. It's easy. You can find him on every avenue. Follow him on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Find him on his YouTube page, his website. He has a list. It's on Spotify, Amazon, Google, Apple iTunes. Go download the music. Um, that way you're already prepared for next week when um, it gets choreographed to. So uh, I want you all to uh, do some TikTok videos dancing dancing the song. <laughs> Don't get them started on TikTok. Don't get them started. That's how we we have a line dance called TikTok Love, where the guy he he wrote most of it, and then the tag is the TikTok video. I was like, yeah, I'll we're bringing TikTok out. to line dance. So, but huge thank you for joining me today. I know it's Friday, um, it's weekend started, guys. Uh, but huge thank you for coming on the show today, man. It was a definite honor and a pleasure having you on here. And huge thank you for uh, playing the new tune. Thanks, man. Thank you for having me. Y'all check out ericberger.com and uh, would love to connect with y'all. Reach out and uh, and say holler. Love to so, meet you. But uh, next Wednesday, guys, 2 o'clock Eastern, V10. Make sure to tune in. Rob Bowers going to be doing it live. I think it's 10 a.m. Eastern when uh, Roy is going to be uh, reteaching Raised on Biscuits. So make sure to check on that, guys. Um, I'll be releasing the schedule for V7 this weekend and the schedule for the Honky Tonk Highway next week, this weekend, guys. So uh, until then, same bad time, same bad channel. Later, guys. <laughs>